It's time now for Tech 24. Now, if you're sick of hearing about chat GPT, too bad. Technology editor Peter O'Brien is here to talk more about it. Peter, great to see you. Hi, Delano. This week, the chatbot became the fastest growing app ever. That's right. If a UBS uh the Swiss bank UBS study is to be believed. It shows that ChatGPT hit 100 million users, that's day, uh, monthly active users, in just two months. Compare that to the wildly successful TikTok, which hit the same milestone in nine months. So for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, ChatGPT is a chatbot powered by artificial intelligence made by uh, the San Francisco-based company OpenAI. And it stunned the tech world as well as the wider public with how well it can answer any question to do with anything up till 2021, because that's when its data uh, basis um, was 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 built up to. Um, bear in mind, it's still an, an early demo, uh, a mobile app, and uh, the next generation of the large language model that it's based on are reported to be released in the next few weeks. But it's already uh, been very impressive and has kicked the whole world of AI into into fast forward. Even I know about it, and that's shocking. But chat GPT is far from the only game in town. Yeah, that's right. Believe it or not, chatbots have actually been around uh, since the 60s, really, since Joseph Weizenbaum created one called Eliza. That was at MIT. Um, and honestly, they've not been all that impressive up until now. Even if you look back to last summer, we had uh, Meta's uh, Blender bot, uh, which was sort of quite awkward, quite rude, and sort of a bit of a curiosity. It didn't really have a scratch on what uh, ChatGPT has. But there are others on the horizon that are looking to knock OpenAI off its pedestal. So another San Francisco company um, called Anthropic has developed a, bro a bot called Claude, which is currently in closed beta. And those who have access see, say it's even more impressive than ChatGPT. Uh, rather than uh, avoiding queries deemed as harmful like ChatGPT does, uh, Claude is meant to engage with them and explain why it objects to them. Meanwhile, Google is, of course, playing catch up. Its own ch chatbot, uh, Lambda, is based on the same architecture as ChatGPT, which incidentally was designed by Google researchers. Famously, a Google engineer was fired uh, last year for saying that Lambda he thought Lambda was sentient, which must mean it's pretty damn convincing. Uh, finally, there's DeepMind, which is owned by Google's parent company, Alphabet. Uh, they're working on a bot called Sparrow, which is supposed to be able to cite its sources, something the others can't do. And of course, we can't forget the Chinese search giant Baidu. Uh, Reuters reports that it's going to be releasing its own chat bot in March. I mean, it's, it's pretty fascinating because I, I, I speak to Siri sometimes and she doesn't give me the best responses, <laughs> nor does Alexa, but yeah. uh, beyond chatbots, what else is AI learning to do? Well, new ground is being broken, as I said, every day in AI. Uh, it's shaping up to be such a stunning rate of progress that really 2023 looks like it could be the year that AI goes truly mainstream beyond just sort of personal assistance we have like that. Uh, San Francisco Public Library Commissioner Pete Huang actually compiled a list of what happened just in January alone. It's this long. Um, so let me share just a few examples with you. Uh, CNET, the technology site, uh, uh, news site in America, was actually found to be generating dozens of articles using AI and just having humans check them afterwards. Lots of these were found to have mistakes in them and to have plagiarized, so they had to issue over 50 corrections. Uh, ChatGPT has also been put to the test in, uh, in exams. Actually, its large language model, GPT-3, has taken uh, exams in medicine, accountancy, and lawyer, and it's passed pretty of them. Most of them are not that convincingly, but it has passed them. Uh, there's also the legal battles between AI firms and content creators, which are ramping up, the most famous of which probably Getty Images uh, against Stability AI. They're suing Stability for scraping Getty's images from the internet to train its um, image generator stable diffusion. NVIDIA is another one. They've released uh, software which allows you to uh, be looking away from the camera, but for the camera to uh, make it look like your eye are trained on it at all times. Um, so this is, for instance, they say would be useful for Zoom calls. If you're having a Zoom call and looking at another screen, your eyes will be looking at it. And of course, um, people have been playing around with it. Daniel Hashimoto, who's an animator, has been using it on famous uh, people's faces in films. You can see just how well it works. But perhaps the weirdest thing I've seen is an infinite stream of a ripoff of the sitcom Seinfeld, complete with AI-generated voice, movement, and text. Have a look. <clears throat> Can you believe this weather? I know. It's so hot out here I'm about to melt. Well, maybe I can help you cool down.
I have an idea, let's get a giant ice cream sundae and break it over each other's heads. <laughs> oh, that is a great idea. You know what would make it even better? <laughs> If we could get some whipped cream to put on each other's faces. Now, Peter, most of these tools seem like they're for very geeky people. Well, what about for someone like me? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we can see that computers and AI are increasingly working their way into everyday lives, the physical world, the social world. And I've got an example here actually with me. It's a French invention called Emobot. So it's got a camera and it can sort of read your facial expressions. It can read your movements and can listen to the tone of your voice. And what it intends to do is really figure out what kind of emotional states you're going in and track, uh, track these over the long term to check if, for instance, you might be becoming depressed or, or, or getting anxiety. It's targeted at elderly people specifically to have in their home, for instance, by their television set so their carers can better understand what they're going through. It's an invasion of you. privacy. Yeah, I was gonna, well, I was going to ask, I mean, would you be happy putting this um, emo bot in, in the... I don't like talking with, the, my, with my smartphone in my hand because yeah. I feel that, that, that everyone's listening anyway, so... Uh, not, for, not for any of your elderly relatives then, Delano. <laughs> we'll see how all this pans out, uh, Peter, all this technology. Maybe come to bite us uh, one day. Thank you, Peter O'Brien there.